In this video, we're going to be covering all the basics and fundamentals of CouchDB. So if you don't know what CouchDB is, it's an open source NoSQL database. And to be more specific, it's a document database. So it's on the same level as MongoDB. It stores data in JSON format, and it uses an internal architecture that was built for the web and built to handle massive amounts of data. It's also cross-platform, so it's available for Linux, Unix systems, Windows, Mac, and FreeBSD. And in this video, we'll be using Windows. So I just want to explain it a little bit before we get started. So down here, you can see that it uses something called the Couch Replication Protocol. So if we click on that, up here it says that it's a protocol for synchronizing JSON documents between two peers over HTTP. All right, and it does this using this CouchDB REST API. So it says the components of the API URL path help determine the part of CouchDB that needs to be accessed. All right, so we can make a request, and as you can see here, if we make a request to our host slash all DBs, that'll give us uh, a list of all the databases in that CouchDB instance. All right, so it's essentially a, um, a NoSQL database that's available to us through making HTTP requests. So we can connect to it through curl or uh, pretty much anything that allows us to make requests. All right, so enough with the methodology. Let's go ahead and get this installed. I'm going to click download and we're going to download the Windows version, which looks like I already have it. So let's see, show in folder and where is it? Right here, CouchDB. All right, so we're going to go ahead and install it. And this is just a simple Windows installer. So we're going to go through this real quick. We'll accept the terms. It's just telling us that the, the path can't have any spaces. Okay, we'll click Next. Um, for this path, I don't know why it chooses E. I want this in my C drive, so let me just change this. And you can install it wherever you'd like. So let's see, I'm going to choose my C drive and I want it in coach DB alright so let's go ahead and click next install okay so we'll let that install alright so it looks like it's finished now once it finishes it should start up as a service and we want to go to our browser and do HTTP local host and I believe the port is 5984 and then we want to go to slash underscore utils alright so that's gonna open up this Foxton program and this is basically um, just a web GUI that we can use to manage our databases um, create our admin accounts and um, pretty much anything else you can do with couch now they changed it in version um, in CouchDB 2 in version 1.6 and earlier it was uh, it was a program called Futon which was just like this we could create databases and all that but it wasn't as as intuitive I guess so now what we want to do is you see this tab down here that says verify we just want to verify that everything's okay that, that, that we can create a database a document we can update documents delete create a view and replication so let's go ahead and click verify Okay, so everything looks good. Gives us a little uh, message up here saying it's all right. Now what we're going to do is click on the Setup tab here. And it asks if we want to create a cluster or a single node. Now a cluster has to do with multiple servers and just a, a large setup that uh, is way beyond what we would need for just a, a simple database and for a simple application. So we're going to click on Configure Single Node. And we need to add some credentials up here so create a username and password we're gonna leave the the address um, at 000 that's gonna be our local host and we want port 5984 so let's click configure alright now it's gonna ask uh, do we want to replicate data if we click on that we can set up replication but we're not gonna do that just yet alright so now if we click on databases we have some stuff here we have uh, global changes metadata uh, replicated data and users okay so for users that has the the admin user we just created all right and if we click on admin we can change our password if we want we can also create other admins 
for the system. So now that everything's set up, we have an admin user. Let's go to the databases tab and we're going to create a new database. So let's call this database, uh, we'll call it my company. Click create. Uh, you are not server admin, that's right. Okay, we have to actually log in as our admin. So let's click log out and admin log in and create database my company and create alright so it says database created successfully so now we're in the database screen notice that the URL says uh, after utils database my company and then all docs limit 100 so this here if we had any documents would show um, up to a hundred so let's go ahead and add a document we'll click uh, new doc and you can see it automatically gives us this ID this underscore ID so we're just gonna add to this so we'll go ahead and add a name and let's add an email And let's do maybe a phone number. And then let's do an address, which will be an array. Okay, so we'll put in some brackets. And let's put in here, actually not an array, it'll be an object. Okay, so we'll say street. And I'm just going to make something up. We'll just say 50 Main Street and City, let's say Miami State FL and Zip. And I don't know the Zip, I'm just going to make something up. All right, so we have this um, document which is a customer or a client. So let's click create document and it says saving document. And over here you can see we have our ID. It also gives us a underscore rev field, which is uh, the revision. If we click this edit document, we can go and we can change things. We can also see all the data. All right, and we can also click um, this check mark, this docs, and it'll show us the rest of the data as well. All right, so let's add one more. I'm actually going to just copy this structure here, and then we'll say new doc. Okay, we'll go ahead and paste that in, and let's just change some of this up. We'll say Sam Smith. Okay, change up the address. We'll say 44 uh, School Street. And let's do Boston. All right, so let's go ahead and add that. Okay, so it's not letting me click create, so that probably means something's wrong in our syntax. And it is, we're missing a curly brace here. There we go. So now we have both documents. And if we click docs, you can see the data for both. All right, so up to this point, we've installed the database, uh, or we've created the database, and we've added two documents. So let's go. Uh, actually, let's go back in here and let's go to new view. Okay, we're going to create a view, and basically, a view is is we want to query our database, and then we want a, a customized response. Now we do this through a map and reduce uh, function down here, and you can see that reduce is optional. So we're just going to work with map. Now this, what this is doing is it's going to uh, emit a key value pair. 
All right, so right here what it's saying is that we, we want to use the ID as the key, and then just the number one is the value. All right, and this isn't very helpful, but let's run it just to see uh, what it gives us. All right, so let's just say view one. And we can actually name the design doc up here, and we'll just say view one. All right, um, actually the index name, uh, we'll just call the index name ID. All right, so let's click create document and build index. And you can see that now we have this view. And if we look, we have the ID as the key. Okay, and then the value is just the number one. Okay, for, for both documents. So that's not very helpful. So let's create another one. We'll say new view. And let's call this view two. Now instead of um, just the number one as the value, I'll keep the ID as the key. But for the value, let's say doc dot name. All right, so let's go ahead and click create. And now you'll see that we still have the ID as the key, but the value is now the name of the customer. Okay, we have John Doe, Sam Smith. Now, if we want to return more than just one field, we can return it as an object. So let's create another view. And we'll call this one view three. And instead of number one, let's put in um, some curly braces and we'll say name. And that's going to be doc.name. And let's do what else do we have? Email doc.email phone doc.phone and address doc.address all right so let's see what that gives us so now you can see that we're getting all the data okay we're getting the name email phone and the address now, if we go up here to this button here, this will actually open it up. This will make a request to the URL. So let's go ahead and click that. And you can see the format of the URL. We have our host, my company, underscore design, and then the view name, which is view three. And we want the view. Uh, we're using new view as the index, limit 20, and there's no reduce function, so reduce false. So let's click view JSON and now you can see that we're getting that data all right so we can make a request to this design document to this url and get this data in fact let's make a request using uh, a tool let's see i think i have it installed it's a chrome tool called rest easy let's see i want rest easy chrome and I should have it installed. Yep, if you don't, just go ahead and install it. I'm going to launch it. And let's grab that URL and put it in here. Okay, we want to make a get request to it. We'll click send and we get the data. So now what I want to do is connect using curl. All right, now for Windows, we have to uh, download it. And let's see, I forget right here, confusedbycode.com slash curl. Uh, we're just going to grab that client. So let's say downloads and let's grab the, I'm going to grab the 64-bit version, which with administrator privileges. Yeah, let's go ahead and click that and download it. Okay, we'll open that when done. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just install that. Click finish. Okay, we can close that up and let's um, open up a command line. Okay, we should be able to say curl dash dash version. All right, so we know that it's now installed and we can call it. So we need to make a get request. So let's um, Let's make a get request to get all the databases. So we'll say curl and we want to add this dash X and then get HTTP. Uh, let's do our loopback one, two, seven, zero, zero, one, and it's port 
5984. And then we're going to do slash underscore all underscore DBs. All right. And that shows us all the databases that are available, including the my company one that we created. Now to create a database, we need to make a put request. So let's say curl dash X and then put and then we want to do HTTP one two seven zero zero one port five nine eight four slash and then the database we want to create. So let's just say test DB. All right. Now we're, it's giving giving us an error because we're not a server admin. So in order to do this, we need to include our credentials. So let's just click the up arrow and we're going to go to uh, right after the slash and we just want to put in our username colon and then the password and then the at symbol. All right. So now we get OK true. And if we go and do our get request to all DBs again, you can see we have our test DB. And if we go over to Foxton and go to databases, there's our te test DB. All right, let's go ahead and clear this out. Now, I'm not going to work with the test DB anymore. I just wanted to show you that we can, in fact, create a database this way. Uh, what I want to do is make a request to the view we created. So this right here so we can get that data. All right. Now, since we're using our loopback address, um, so much, I think it's a good idea to put it in a variable. So let's do set, uh, we'll say set server, and we want to set that to HTTP, and then let's put our credentials in here as well so we can make admin operations. So admin at, um, at 127.0.0.1 port 5984. All right, so we'll set that as a server variable. And now we should be able to say echo percent server percent. And OK, so now we have that stored in a variable. And just to test it out, let's say curl get and then we'll use our server variable and slash underscore all underscore DBs. All right, good. So now let's make a request to that view. OK, so we'll just click up and let's go my company. Let's see my company slash underscore design slash view three is what we called it slash underscore view and slash new dash view. All right, and we don't need the limit or the reduce false. Let's go ahead and run that. And now you can see that we're getting that view. We're fetching that data. All right, so let's clear. So now what I want to do is insert a document. OK, insert a customer. Now we need to include an ID, which is in the UUID format. OK, now we could create the string manually. But there's actually uh, we can make a request to generate one. So if we say curl x get and we use server slash underscore UUIDS and that'll generate one for us. So let's go ahead and grab that. I'm going to do control C to copy it. Whoops. And now we want to do our insert. So let's say curl x put and we want the server and then we're going to do let's see slash uh, my company slash and then we want to paste that UUID in with control V and then we want to just add dash D open some quotes and then we can put our customer in here. Now I'm just going to add a name and email just to keep this short. So let's say name. I uh, will say Kathy Williams and let's do email. 
we'll say kwill at yahoo.com. All right, now in Windows, we actually have to uh, escape these quotes. So we got to put a backslash in front of them. So those, that one, and that one, and this one. All right, so let's go ahead and try to run that. Okay, so it gives us this OK true. So things look OK. Let's, um, let's run our view again. We'll make a request to the view, which is right here. And now you can see that Kathy Williams is included. All right, so we successfully added a, a document. Let's go over here to Foxton and take a look. We'll click this Docs checkbox. And there she is, right there. All right. Notice that the views also come up when we when we view all documents. Okay, because they're documents themselves. So the last thing that I want to show you is replication. All right. Now I'm going to replicate to a remote database. So a good service for remote um, CouchDB databases is Cloudant. So we're going to go to, I think it's cloudant.com. Yep. And all you want to do is click sign up and create an account really quick. All right. Now you're going to have your host name will be your username dot All right. So once you create that, it should automatically log you in. I'm going to go ahead and sign in. I already have an account. All right. So let me sign in. And you'll see that it's basically the same interface that we have on our local host. All right. With the addition of uh, this account tab, we have some options here. All right. So what I want to do is take our my company database and replicate it to the remote host. All right. So we're going to click on replication. And on this side, this is actually really easy how they lay this out. We're just going to choose uh, the database we want to replicate, which is my company. And then over here, we're going to choose remote because we want to replicate a remote to a remote database. And we're just going to add an S. So it's HTTPS. And then we want to do our username. Okay, and then colon, and then you want to use your Cloudant password, not the one on your local host. Okay, your Cloudant password, and then we'll do at, and then your username again. Okay, dot cloudant.com. We also want to put the name of the database on the end, so slash my company. All right, and then we're going to check off create target so that it creates that database. And let's click replication. Okay, so it says replication from my company to a remote host. Now let's go over to the remote host, click databases, and there it is, my company. Click on it, and it has all of our data. All right, so you can see how extremely easy replication is with CouchDB. Now we're going to go ahead and stop here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a, a second part to this video where we can build uh, a simple Node.js application using this CouchDB database. All right, there's a module called, I think it's CouchDB, uh, I think it's just CouchDB Node um, that will allow us to communicate with our database and uh, fetch the data, fetch the documents, insert documents, and all that. All right, so thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.